Hi, my name is Chris and this is Battle Nonsense. Thanks to my patrons I was able to get my hands on the Overwatch beta pretty early and so I can already present you the netcode analysis today. Now despite being labeled as a beta you can be pretty sure that there won't be any substantial changes between now and the release on the 25th. So the results that you see in this video should be representative of what you get when you play Overwatch at release. But I will do an update video after its release and when the developers do changes to the networking of the game. But before we take a look at the test results from Overwatch, we need to talk about a few basics that are required to understand these results. If you've watched any of my previous netcode analysis videos and feel that you know what latency, tick and update rates are, then you can use the annotation link in the top right to skip that part of the video. So when you play online, then your game and the server obviously need to exchange data. When your game sends a data packet to the server, then this packet needs some time to reach that server. How long it needs depends on how far away you live from that server and if you use a copper or fiber internet connection. The travel time of the data is not affected by your upload and download bandwidth. So don't get confused when people talk about internet speeds because that always refers to how long a download or upload takes to finish, which is mostly affected by your bandwidth. The travel time of your data is one of the most important factors for online gaming. Because if it takes your data very long to reach its destination, then it's outdated at the moment it arrives. This is now where the term ping comes into play. If your client tries to ping the server, then it sends an ICMP echo request, which needs some time to reach the server. The server then sends an ICMP echo reply back to your client, which again needs some time to reach you. And your ping to that server is then the round trip time of that whole process. So the higher your ping, the more you lag, because the data is no longer up to date when it reaches its destination. Then we have the update rates, which is how frequently the clients and servers send data. Some games use the same rate in both directions, others use different rates for the client and the server updates. The more frequently these updates are sent, the more data the game has to work with, and this means that the game becomes more fluid. It also affects your lag, because it does make a big difference if you receive 10 updates per second or 60 updates per second. This incoming data then needs to get processed, the physics and bullets need to get simulated, and then the game has to send the results. How frequently this is done is defined by the simulation rate or tick rate of the game. And again, the more simulations the game runs per second, the better the game feels, because it processes new data earlier, and it has more data to work with because higher tick rates allow for higher update rates, which means less lag. Now, where are those multiplayer servers coming from? One solution is that you pay hosters to set up dedicated servers for your games in their data centers to which your players then connect to. This means that your game server is running on powerful hardware and has enough bandwidth to handle all those players who connect to it. The downside is that if you don't have a game that builds around the idea of the community running these servers, then the publisher or game studio has to pay for them and they are quite expensive. The other approach is that you simply use the PC or console of one of the players to host the game, which means that he becomes the server. With that solution the game studio does not have to pay for these expensive dedicated servers, which have to be available in many different regions. The downside is that the player who is also the server gets an advantage, because he has zero lag, which means that he will see you before you see him, and he can fire at you before you can fire at him. You also face the problem that all players have to connect to this host through his consumer grade internet connection, when the worst case is also using Wi-Fi locally. This frequently results in a lot of lag, jittering player movement and unreliable hit registration. But the most frustrating aspect of such a client to client connection is that if your host disappears, then the game has to choose another player to host the match, which means that the whole game pauses for several seconds until it finished to migrate to another host. So while dedicated servers do not magically provide 100% lag free connections, they still offer the best possible experience in online multiplayer games. So these are the factors that have a quite big impact on your lag. Now let's have a look at the connections that the game establishes. So what we see here is that the game opens quite a few local connections. The first actual external IP address is this one here, which is registered to Blizzard Entertainment. The next two addresses are for multicast followed by three Blizzard servers and another local connection. Then we have the actual dedicated game server that we are playing on and two more servers that are from Blizzard. So I always kept an eye on the game server IP while I was playing and most of the time the game server was one from Blizzard hosted in France, to which I had a ping of 34 milliseconds. 
But sometimes I would also end up on a game server located in Germany, hosted by Amazon's cloud service AWS, to which I had a ping of 17 milliseconds. So it looks like Blizzard uses their own servers in addition to the Amazon cloud. Another thing that I would like to mention is that you cannot use the command line to ping the game server, as it does not respond to an ICMP echo request. However, you can enable this option here in game to see your ping to the game server, but the game will then still not tell you the ping of the other players, which is unfortunate. Now let's get back to these connections that the game establishes. If you've watched my Rainbow Six Siege, Black Ops 3 or the Division Netcode analysis videos, then you know that the voice of IP feature in these games reveals the IP addresses of the players that you play with. Overwatch does not do that. Even when you use the in-game voice over IP feature, no one will see your IP address, which means that Overwatch does voice over IP right. So that has to be mentioned as other big budget titles did not manage to do that. Now how about the update rates at which the client sends and receives data? When we look at the captured network data in Wireshark, then we see that the game sends an update to the game server about every 16 milliseconds and it receives an update roughly every 48 milliseconds which means that we are looking at a send rate of about 60 Hz and a lower receive rate of just 20 Hz, while the game will most likely use a tick or simulation rate that is in line with its send rate of 60 Hz. So I knew that the game used a low receive rate during the closed beta, but I was still disappointed to see that the developers have not increased it to 60 Hz, at least not yet. However, what I was very happy to find out is that when you create a match, then this will spawn a dedicated game server for you and your friends to play on, to which you send 60 updates per second and receive 20 updates per second from just like you do on the public servers. So you will not have a worse experience when you play on such a custom server. Now how long is the delay or network lag that we have in Overwatch when both players have a ping of 17 milliseconds to the game server? For this test I used two PCs where each of them uses its own fiber internet connection and a 144Hz gaming monitor. The game is running at more than 144 frames per second and without vSync. The last part of my equipment is a high speed camera that records at 400 frames per second which allows me to very accurately measure the delay or lag that two players experience while playing on the same server. To measure the delay I have player 1 fire a shot and then I count the frames until player 2 sees that shot on his monitor. After 40 tests, the highest measured delay was 105 milliseconds. On average, I measured 90 milliseconds and 67 milliseconds was the lowest measured delay. If the game would receive 60 updates per second instead of just 20 updates per second, then this would reduce the delay by up to 32 milliseconds, which means that it would then be as fast as Battlefield 4 at 60 Hz. So increasing the receive rate of Overwatch to 60 Hz really has to be the next step for its networking as they are losing quite a lot of time there with these 20 updates per second. Now earlier I told you that the voice over IP system in Overwatch does not reveal your IP address like other games sadly do. But how fast is it? Because in a game like Overwatch which is all about teamwork, it's quite important that there is very little lag when you talk to the other players. So in addition to my usual network lag tests, I will now also test the voice over IP lag in games that include such a feature. In Overwatch I measured an average voice over IP lag of 330 milliseconds when both players had a ping of 17 milliseconds to the game server. In comparison The Division has a voice over IP lag of almost 1.5 seconds for two players that had a ping of 5 milliseconds between them. So based on our experience while playing the Overwatch beta, the voice over IP system is fast enough to not have the lag harm the communication between players. So the developers have clearly done a very good job so far and I do not have much to criticize. However there is something that I have to mention which everyone who played the beta has noticed and that's the issue of receiving damage behind cover which is also present in Overwatch as you can see here in this short clip. What Overwatch does is that it tells you when you have a too high latency and it will also tell you when you are suffering from packet loss. Both cause problems for your own experience as well as for the experience of the other players as your bad connection gives them the sensation of receiving damage behind cover, which can be the most infuriating thing to encounter when this is the final bit of damage that kills you. Increasing the receive rate of the game from 20Hz to 60Hz will already mitigate this issue a bit. But the developers really have to think about disconnecting players who have a very bad connection. In my tests the game server would never disconnect me, not even at a ping of 800 milliseconds and 50% packet loss. 
so don't get me wrong, it's not fun to play when you have a bad connection. However, it's a massive issue to have players with a decent connection to suffer as a result of it. There have to be reasonable limits for how bad a player's connection is allowed to be for him to stay connected to the server. So in my opinion, the developers have done a pretty impressive job with Overwatch so far, and those of you who play the beta will probably agree on that. I hope that the developers will continue to work on the game and improve it after its release, and when they do, then I will definitely test those changes and tell you if they do what they are supposed to do. If you like this kind of content where I look at the networking of games, then you can help me cover the production costs by becoming one of my patrons over at patreon.com, as that ensures that I can test more games close after their release. You can find the link to my Patreon page in the description down below. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a like, subscribe for more, and I hope to see you next time. Until then, have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris, and this was Battle Nonsense.